The money fight. The money fight. I read a book one time that says, uh, I think it was every divorce could be traced through money problems. There's a fight over money. Money's needed for survival. You can't even buy medical insurance without money. This is just for my protégés, okay? Just protégé talk. Don't be ashamed that you need money. <laughs> Don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed that you need to study money. I read every book, every word that Warren, there's three wealthiest men in America and I read every word they say. Why? Those who have what you don't have know something you don't know. And I want to talk to you about the money fight because there's, it's everybody's fighting over money. Employees asking for raises, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, we, we know the money fight. I want to give you some basic thoughts as a father to a son, as a preacher to people. Number one, money is more important than anybody ever told you. I went to get an MRI one day, and they, they wouldn't take my three medical insurances. They said I had to give them 500 cash when I walked up to the window. So I went there for the MRI. And they demanded $3,700. That's common. That's ordinary. I would say most of your fights on the earth will be over your health and over your money to pay for it. Three or four things are big to me. Number one, money is a reward system for solving a problem. Money is how you're rewarded when you solve a problem. I had 85 people on staff. They didn't make all the same things. I had one man make four times what the others made. Why? He solved a different problem. The problem you solve determines the level of your reward. A person who types Fifty dollars, fifty words a minute, is a little different than the one who gets a hundred and twenty words typed a minute. When you increase the problem that you solve, you increase favor. How do you solve problems? Adaptation to the vision of the owner. Going early to work, the willingness to work overtime. The wood is to train someone. And there's keys in that. Number one, do you believe in the vision of your business? If you are if you work for a preacher, do you believe in the preacher? Every few weeks I'll tell the staff, the day you don't believe in my life or my ministry or me, I may give a 30-day notice and we'll start the process. Don't stay where there's distrust. Don't stay if you don't believe in the people you're working for. Don't. Are you where you've been assigned? Eyes see, ears hear, mouth speaks, hands reach. You're designed to solve specific problems. Are you where? You're supposed to be from the voice of the Spirit. Are you in the environment of favor? Favor guarantees rewards. I had an encounter with the Lord when I was 21 about a preacher about sowing seeds. And some of you have heard my testimony. But I want to just close briefly with this. Psalms 112, verse 1 and 3, says if you follow the laws in Scripture, the wealth and riches would be in your house. Proverbs 1, 5 says if you're a wise person, you're a listener. I handed a $100 bill a few weeks ago to a homeless man that walked up to my window. I prayed over him. 
Then I said, son, I said, I'm a, I'm a pastor. Here's one of my books. And he slashed it back to me. He says, I don't read. Give it to somebody who reads. I don't read. And inside me, my Irish Cherokee voice said, no wonder he's homeless. He won't read. The difference in men is the voice they trust. The difference in men is who they're willing to listen to. The greatest difference in men is who they admire. Absalom did not admire David. Solomon did. When I meet someone, the first thing I want to know is who are the heroes. I want to know what their goals are. And I want to know who they admire. I learned about the law of the seed. Everything's a seed or a harvest. Time is a seed. Seed means beginning. A smile is a seed. A conversation is a seed. Listening is a seed. The Bible teaches so clearly in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, Malachi 3, 9, 10, 11, Luke 6, 38, 39, and 40, Mark chapter 10, verse 28, 29, and 30. The Bible teaches being in covenant with God. A man and a young couple came up to me one day after I preached at the Wisdom Center and says, uh, we do not believe in tithing like you do. I said, well, then don't. <laughs> don't. Why are you about it? I told you, just write your own book. I write my books. You write yours. Bless you. Never, never, never stay in conversation with a fool. Lady walked out of the Wisdom Center one day and she says, I can't pay my bill. I'm three months behind in my apartment and uh, my car note and I'm, and I'm doing it. I says, let's pray right now. For the Lord to take each seed you planted. I don't need that. I don't need it. God's working. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know you were getting advice from God. Because you just told me that you hadn't had a, you had paid your light bill on your house note for three months. Oh, hey, if you and God are having appointments, hey, you don't need Murdoch. Go right ahead. Never stay in the presence of a non-listener. Never. He said, shake the dust off your feet. Here's some questions to ask you about the worth of the people around you. Do they know the value of God? And what's the proof? They know the value of God. Father, your sheep know your voice. There's something very special about these moments right now. Father, I ask you, from the depths of my heart, everything we have came from you. Our eyesight came from you. Our hearing came from you. Everything we have came from you. And the fight over two nickels, the 10% of the tithe, is an absurdity. There's somebody following me right now, Lord, who's been tithing, but they haven't praised you for a harvest. Please fulfill the hundredfold guarantee. I come into a covenant with you, family, that in 90 days, your hundredfold guarantee, I call it Harvest 100, will start happening in your life. Favor legal protection in the court, especially deserting crooks in your life. The first rule of money under Warren Buffett when he was worth $47 billion, he says, the first rule of money is don't lose any. Partner with God. It's not a mistake. Love you much. Mike Murdoch. 
seventy seventh birthday.